Fuck you, Mr. Blasphemy. Fui, bird. Coming to you not quite live from Pinnacle Studios, a brand new workers production. I'm Sasha Sinevic. With me is Brian O'Hawk. Brian, you're on. Yeah, I know. What's up? So we bu- we announced that this episode was going to be about uh, like music documentaries. We're going to discuss that. We're going to put that in the back burner for a second and uh, go tell some more serious route. Dum, dum, dum. Yes, exactly. Uh, I'm sure many people have already heard uh, the about the suicide, Chester Bennington suicide. Chester Bennington. You're mocking a your dead man's name. What What are you going to say about my name when I die? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of jokes you can make about a guy named Sasha. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so his suicide happened, of course, it's uh, two months after another famous suicide had happened. <laughs> and uh, that one uh, appears to have uh, affected him greatly. Yeah, he was a wuss. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Well, no, yes, I know. He was uh, affected quite a lot by uh, Chris Cornell's. Yeah, from Audio Slave. Um, well, he was his well, son's. Soundgarden. He was his son's. So. Yes. No, yeah, what did I say? So audio. He, audio Slave, but yeah. yes, you're correct. Yeah, yeah wait, that was right. <laughs> yes. But <laughs> Soundgarden, man. You picked the other one. His main band. Sure. What whatever. made him famous. Yeah, yeah. You don't give Audio Slave credit. Can't we just enjoy them both? Jeez. Can't we just enjoy them both? It's like saying uh, Stone Temple Pilots was better when uh, Chester Bennington was was uh, you know front manning it. Are you gonna say it wasn't? Which is you know uh, you know another thing that you know a guy who killed himself. <laughs> well, there is a trend within yeah. the music industry I remember like one of the earliest episodes we did was about self-destructive behavior amongst oh, yeah. musicians like is it sort of an inherent part many of them fall tell it's you know <clears throat> uh, excessive uh, addictive behavior be it drugs be it sex be it you know whatever else rock and roll yeah and, and uh, well, just wealth <laughs> itself seems to create that a lot yeah. within celebrity culture and uh, you know, if you look at the yeah, go ahead. You want to yeah. finish the start first? Yeah. Go uh, go if go you go. look at, uh, like, suicide rates, you can list many famous ones. Uh, ones that, you know, like, musicians that affected you, right? Like, Kurt Cobain would be, of course, at the top of he the list. He was killed, man. Courtney you were, Love killed him. You've been watching too much Bleach. <laughs> <laughs> so you will have people, like, uh, you have people who would argue that this, along with, like, overdosing on drugs, along with, like, going to financial bankruptcy, this just... Amongst people, especially like within a rock, heavy rock community, within that music genre, it just seems to be easy to fall into depression itself. Yeah. More than that. More than anything. Yeah. Well, it, it's around? that's the thing. Is like I was gonna say, it's you know we've stated it before, you know, and uh, you know prior podcasts and stuff that uh, musicians are it's a creative outlet, so they're very you know creative people and a creative people tend to you know hold emotions differently you know except for you because you're a psychopath but <laughs> that's a different story uh creative people you know they're creative because they take their emotions and they put it in some sort of you know art form drawing painting singing you know musicians things like that acting as well because uh, there's tons of actors who, you know, commit suicide and things like that too. But, you know, this is more on the music side that we talk about. So, yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, it is sad that uh, people do take their lives the way they do or, you know, take the path they take and such. Um, I think it's stupid. But, you know, it happens. You know, he, especially with Chester, he was sad because Chris Cornell killed himself. But... There's no reason for him to take his own life because of it, you know. Because if you think about it, Chris Cornell left his son without a father. I don't know how old his son is, but I'm sure he's older. And now <laughs> his godfather is gone too. Well, Chester himself also had six kids. Yeah, and just, well, that's the thing is his godfather is gone too. Plus, Chester's family is missing their father now, you know, and so on and so forth. And it goes down from there. So, I mean, that's the one thing is like, why the hell would you, you know, you feel sad about it? You know, that your friend, you know, killed himself. And I was like, oh, well, no, I'm going to do it. Why? There's, you know, what, what's it going to do? You know, pay homage to him? You'd pay more homage to him by doing what uh, Dave Grohl and Chris Nervoselic have done. You know, 
thank Kurt Cobain for being, you know, who he was and helping them, you know, get where they are and doing their things. And to this day, you know, Dave Grohl will still say, you know, if it wasn't for Nirvana and for Kurt, you know, I wouldn't be in the same boat as he is now. You know, they pay homage that way, just like tons of other musicians and bands and things. So, I mean, what what the hell would be killing yourself paying homage to? Nothing, really, you know? Well, I mean, I can't say what was going through his mind, but a lot of times when people kill themselves, they're not really uh, thinking too much ahead of the future or they have a negative outlook of anything that is to come in the state of mind that they're at. So that's yeah, why yeah. they choose that option. And suicide is a difficult thing to talk about in some ways because there is a variety of reasons why. Oh, yeah. Kill and there is a certain level of both taboo and stigma attached to suicide. So like people will often have like immediate sympathies for you yeah, or yeah, yeah. immediate disgust. Tell oh, yeah. So they'll either say, poor you, you were in such a bad state of mind, so you killed yourself. Or they'll be like, you, we coward you, you couldn't handle life, so you killed yourself. Yeah. So, but I don't, I don't know if either one, like if you just talk about suicide, sort of like when you talk about depression, it's one thing, like being patronized and consenting and giving people advice that you're not in, like you're not in their shoes, it's sort of, it, there's no point to it. It's not going to get it anywhere. Yeah. It's not going to get anywhere to the person who kill themselves because they're dead. And it's not going to go anywhere to the people who are thinking about killing themselves because uh, they they will simply shut you out and say, you don't understand what I'm going through. Yeah, now, yeah, the yeah. other extreme of going like this all overly empathetic crowd where you're like, like, oh, poor you. And like, uh, I can't uh, like imagine you who could not handle this much you if I was in you say that feel the same okay then you're kind of belittling then you kind of treat him as a like yeah, they yeah, have no yeah, agency yeah, yeah. you're like yeah. you c- can't handle this because you your state of mind is so fragile that, yeah. that's not going to be helpful either because that might further put him into a state of uh, uh, depression just because their self esteem is not high to begin with and if you start telling him no 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 you are simply not the kind of person who can ever get past this yeah, yeah, that, yeah that's yeah. not going to help anyone it, yeah either. no but that's I mean so that's, that's, what that's the one thing it's, it's a difficult it's, thing to discuss to discuss for yeah, a lot of people but I mean that's the one thing it's, it's the fact that you know it is a very difficult thing to it didn't, you know just depression in, in, in itself mm-hmm. is a very difficult subject to uh, to uh, you know handle because of the fact that depression and all that does span many, many different ways. I mean, you have depression to where, yeah, you're just sad and, you know, whatever, you feel lonely, but you get over it. And then you get to deeper depressions where you, you know, go to a psychiatrist and all they do is push pills on you, which doesn't help, mm-hmm. you know. Then no psychiatrist is going to just sit there and let you talk and talk back and forth. Well, some right do, when they but feel, that sometimes doesn't no, help either. right when they feel like, oh, the well, he's really, really bad. The, here's some pills. Here's pills. The private ones give you more pills than the rest, than the other ones. Because that's one thing they do. That's what they make so much money for. Is like, oh, here's some pills. Here's pills. That's all it a, is. All psychiatrists are freaking drug dealers. That's all they are. Every single one of them. Well, all is a bit generalized to say, but I have. And met I said every, it I haven't up. met every psychiatrist. So every I'm not single say that. psychiatrist. There's a big is a drug pusher. There's a big interest industry. You got some history there. Yes, <laughs> I know. I know what I'm talking about. Okay, well, I'm just saying. I personally don't make general comments you know, like that. The only way. You don't get drugs pushed on you as you tell them no. And then they still try to push it on you. And you're like, I don't want that stuff. If you're not going to help me, I'll go somewhere else and actually go, you know, pay someone who's actually going to do their job and try to help me and discuss things. Mm-hmm. And the next person you can go to, what are they going to do? Try to push bills on you. That's all they do. Damn drug dealers. Damn psychiatrists. Mm-hmm. Easiest freaking degree to get. Freaking. Well. It is. You, if you if you're gonna it be is. A, if you're gonna be an MD, you still have to go to medical school. Doesn't matter. <laughs> which is not which by most people science isn't easy. Yeah. Isn't easy even if you focus on yeah. psychiatry. Psychiatry is the, the easiest freaking thing to get. Uh, All you have to do is say, "Oh, and how does that make you feel?" This has become like your fuck Metallica <laughs> for this episode. Yeah, yes. <laughs> and, you know, you know, well, Metallica. I can't wait for them to don't, get off the face of the earth. Don't say because you know Metallica they suck. Every single one of them. Not throwing the fuck Trump. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 you no. Know, although gonna, although it's Trump, you know. Yeah, it's caused a lot of depression, a lot just, of probably suicide. Yes, yes, yes. There's, there's, but uh, Trump is me, causing, you know, the the chaos of, of the earth. You know, he's making Mother Gaia depressed. 
<laughs> oh my god, that is such an Austinite hippie thing to say. Oh, you know, you're from Austin. If you, if you refer to the Earth as a personification of an entity, but, but anyways, but yeah, depression is a hard thing to, to deal it's, with. It's a hard thing to discuss, especially. But, but like I was saying earlier, uh, musicians, you know, or not just musicians, but artists. They do have a, a higher tendency of, they of feel depression and, and, you know, suicide and things like that because of the fact that, yes, they take their emotions, they feel it differently, and they do, you know, different outlets. And sometimes their outlet isn't enough. And so they think the only way to get rid of it or whatever is suicide. And I think it is a very stupid thing. But, I mean, it happens. And, you know, and it, and if it happens some, to someone close to you, you're... You know, you feel it more in, in, in that sense. So I understand why he was feeling, you know, Chester. Right, he, he, he probably really, really wasn't in the healthy because, state of mind. Yeah, he was, he's so a, again, he was like, a musician. He's, if you actually listen to his, his songs, like the Linkin Park, mm -hmm. and you actually read the lyrics, you know, as I was showing you, uh, you know, a couple days ago, wasn't a happy guy. I mean, if you read all this stuff, mm -hmm. they were very depressing when I'm reading. I'm like... God damn! Well, he makes were, these songs sound very happy and stuff, but you actually listen to them, and they're not the happiest things. Well, they did his thing. Looking Park sort of hit it big. What was it? Two thousand, two thousand one. Yeah, the Hybrid Theory. I was just starting high school at that time, so they were sort of all over the place within a crowd that I ran with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sort of. I'm not going tangentially within similar overlap with the punk crowd. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. What? Probably will be would have been the emo card a few years later. Yeah. So the alternative card. Yeah. So but, they, but, they, they I mean, were there. There was just sort of like mid level. And it's okay. You, yeah. Nobody really. But I mean, that's the thing is, like I said, it's Lincoln. But Park. It, it was people who were more like in a state of mind, like what you would stereotypically put in, sort of like the bit of a mopey crowd. Yeah. Is what I'm trying. But to I mean, say. but you, Lincoln Park songs don't sound that sad. I mean, if you think about it, if you actually break down the lyrics and stuff, they are very depressing. Mm -hmm. songs but you hear them and you're like oh well it's a little upbeat it's a little faster you know it's rocky so it's it's you know not as as it's nothing like johnny cash which you hear him well, sing and you feel the pain that he gets yeah. but you get this whole emotion from it you know well if you look or, the first or like songs hold on well you know there's tons of other you know, artists in the end and one step closer are all Cynical and pessimistic in some sense. Yes. And the end is about how time is fleeting you yes, by and you can't you, stop it. Unless you pay attention to the lyrics, you don't really catch well, it. Well, I always kind you, of... You we, just... You... Well, you you, you, you overanalyze no, no. over okay, things. Look, you and I, is. we're geeks about this kind yeah, of stuff. So we it, probably will analyze lyrics more yeah, than the other But I mean, if I'll, the thing I'll is, if you, you just listen to it, it's like, oh, that's a catchy beat. You know? It's sort of a hard thing, especially like one step closer. Yeah, it's 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 you know it's a catchy beat. It's like, oh, yeah... You know, whatever head, you head hear the lyrics, you actually listen. To, you actually read the lyrics. You're like, well, that is not what I expected. Mm -hmm. You know, those lyrics. I like. I was going through them. You know, and I was like, well, I don't remember being that sad. I was like, oh, the tune, the beat, and everything was a little high, a little happier. So that's why. That's well, what threw it the... off. And so that's the thing is he was he's you know being a musician that's his his you know channel right there is writing the lyrics and singing and doing all that and he put us. I guess that's what made him feel better, you know, in a sense. And then with, you know, a suicide, someone, you know, kill himself who's so close to him, I guess, you know, it is something to push him over the edge. But still, I think it was a stupid idea or stupid thing to do. Right. But, you know, as as was stated multiple times already, yeah, it is one of well, those touchy things where it's you can't really say, oh, well, you know, you well, should have seen it coming. Or the something. issue of suicide has philosophical has a philosophical back on the dates like do all the and all the great minds in some way or another have discussed it though yeah. the 20th century existentialists were really big on they consider suicide is like the absolute question why should you not just go ahead and kill yourself some yeah. people religious who are, answers is all usually like well it's uh, especially like the Abrahamic ones it's a form of damnation so that that gets people to put up the crappy life the hope they're going to get into heaven later on yeah. if you don't have that foundation what do you have to hold on to but even the existentialists determined that Whatever problems you're having in life, oblivion doesn't solve that problem. In life. Yeah, like non-existence doesn't solve any issues you have in existence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so, like you might have a shitty year, decade, lifetime. You have no prospect, totally absent of any sort of existence. Yeah, like so you can think whatever. But again, when you're in that level of depression, like to, at that point on the on that edge. 
Yeah. Uh, you're not thinking in those kind of terms. You a lot of times you're just thinking, I just want it. I want everything to end. I just I don't want to feel. And a lot of times yeah. people will turn to pills and other things as uh, or to alcohol or you know whatever whatever is sometimes sex itself. You know, like yeah, they just yeah. whatever it's, it's something and it's take away to the numb pain. themselves. So yeah. to distract themselves, they'll sort of mind-numbingly watch TV and play video games all day because that distracts yeah, them I, I from their lives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ooh, they cut too close. <laughs> just, 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 yeah, just maybe they'll like, and they'll do that, but it often it doesn't make. It's a temporary solution. It's a band. It, it doesn't yeah, fix yeah. whatever your problem, whatever your underlying problem is. You're not happy. Sometimes yeah. you can't really identify why you're not happy, and that creates a bigger problem. Like let's say you lose your job, your spouse leaves you, your kids don't want to talk to you. Okay, you know why you're not happy. <laughs> like yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not saying that that doesn't make the depression easier, but you know exactly what factors led up to it. A lot of times, and this is a thing like uh, when we look like celebrities, who comes as, you know, we who are not richy, <laughs> richy, we who are not rich, we who are not famous, we who are, have no influence, uh, like we who are not celebrities, we think, what are you complaining about? You yeah, have, you have everything you have a life, life, you got money, that, uh, you got... Yeah. You have a life that I could only dream of. But even if you like expand that circle, people in... More affluent countries, yeah, just Western countries. Even Joe Schmoes, we have much more than people in underdeveloped countries, yeah, 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 yeah. countries. But our happiness rate is lower, and our depression rate is higher, and our suicide rate is higher than some guy that's whose entire existence is just wake up, work in the fi- in the field day in and day out for cents. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. and they usually report much higher overall satisfaction in life than we do, even though we have all this luxury. So yeah, a lot of but times that, that, that's the thing is abundance. It yeah. creates boredom, which it, it, creates it comes, unhappiness. It comes down to like as you're saying, uh, third world countries and countries that have seemingly more happiness. It's the fact that they have less. You know, they don't have TVs to to uh, you know drown out society. They don't have you know computers like all of them. You know. You know, Facebook and all that junk. They have family. They have each other. So there's a they, stronger bond. There. Still, so yeah. Nice so bond. what they do is they go and they farm their land, and then they come home and they have a dinner with the family, and they, you know, show yeah. love for their family, and the whole family gets together and does things. And I think that alone is something so that shows more cohesion. You know, shows you know, more see. happiness. Um, <clears throat> there was a I don't. I don't know if it was a TV show or something I saw. I don't remember. It was something just clicked in my head. And uh, they made a statement of uh, what's the happiest place on earth. And it was something like in Nepal to where, uh, you know, that, that said, I don't remember what it was exactly. But the whole statement was like the happiest place on earth is somewhere in Nepal. Something like they celebrate everything. Someone has a kid. You know, they throw a party. Someone's getting married. They throw a party. Someone falls in love. They throw a party. It's the happiest place on earth because of the fact that it's community and everyone gets together and they all, you know, it's all one big, you know, thing. And so that brings up the happiness. And so, yeah, you think about, you know, celebrities who have tons and tons of people around them, you know, you know, on top of paparazzi, they have all their, their uh, entourage and all this stuff and whatever. But how many of those people are actually there for the actual celebrity, for the person? And not for the fame and the money and the, you know, the all the lights and all the things that come with being a friend or around somebody who who is famous, you know, like if you take uh, Robin Williams, who killed himself, mm-hmm. happiest guy you could ever know. That apparently, you, you thought, <laughs> yeah. I mean, everyone is like, oh, he's always trying to make other people happy. He's, you know, throws jokes. He's hyper as hell. All this stuff, and he ends up. You know, hanging himself or whatever. Yeah. Well, it came and, out- and it came out to be well from the story I heard. Came out to be as like, well, he was getting onset of Parkinson's. He didn't want to deal with it. Right. Well, apparently he's also he's he has struggled with depression for decades. Yeah, yeah. Or, like not like overtly, it wasn't part of his act. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, like some comedians, they make a part of their act. And like uh, Louis C.K. Constant talks about <laughs> his shit life and the shit life he had, and all, yeah. and that's just part of his act. Now he's also yeah. had the pressure, but he just puts out that Robin Williams wasn't one of those yeah, guys. Yeah. He, his act didn't even focus on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, like Leon comes out, and then when it comes to Parkinson's, and that's the other thing. You know, one thing that's hard to talk about when it comes to like uh, suicide specifically, not just depression, but yeah, yeah, like yeah, sometimes yeah. you have good reasons to be depressed, like the example I mentioned earlier, where yeah, you're yeah, like yeah. your whole life's falling apart, and you know yeah. exactly what it is. Suicide. The other 
a thing that often people want to put to you is it's easier for those of us to sort of preserve our value and worth for life to just say clearly that person on some level was mentally ill. Yeah. Like yeah. Not, you know, you're not psychotic or something, but clearly there was a mental health factor involved. So we could sort of brush it as long as you're sound mind, sane mind, uh, that's why, that's how you fall into that. The rest was like, well, I'm not, I am of sane mind, so that would never be me. In reality, I think you could, you know, and I'm not advocating suicide because we just talked about yeah. why, you know, yeah. I went through the whole, like, it doesn't solve anything and yeah, whatever yeah. you have. You, I can see why people would have, as someone of sane mind would have a rational reason why they would think, okay, this is it. And like, if you're suffering from a illness that yeah. you know, and you know how it's going to end, you have Parkinson's disease, you, you're at the early onset of dementia. Yeah. You know that when you die, it's going to be a long process. It's going to be a painful process. And when you die, it's not going to be you. Yeah. yeah and yeah, you yeah. don't want your loved ones. Like, I'm just saying right now, I don't want people to remember me like with my last moments as some shell of me that's not really even me <laughs> like it's like well my mind is so far gone that it might as well just be some other person that just yeah, yeah, went yeah. away so like if i could avoid that you know with my 70s 80s 90s wherever i am at and if i'm suffering like that i while i'm still while i still have some level of autonomy while i still have some uh sense of who i am yeah, yeah, yeah. i might opt out that option yeah you know and that's yeah. what dying with dignity and yeah well i mean that's, that's, and all yeah, that, yeah, all yeah, that yeah. Comes so in. i was actually about to bring that up you know dr gavorkian i mean he helped people in that sense who were yeah you were you so know, everybody can deathly understand ill or were gonna, you know they had no choice or they had a choice i guess but i mean that they just didn't want to deal with the choice was going to eventually they were going to get to the choice yeah. would be you can spend the next decade or two suffering or and you're going to die anyway or or you can take take this route yeah and i mean that's you know which assisted suicide and stuff like that but yeah that's a whole different topic and i mean we we are getting a little bit away from from the the music aspect of it but but, i mean yeah we are we're covering i mean we have to cover the basics of it the way people can understand so i'm saying like we can all understand see this example that i gave because i said you can be saint of sane rational mind and you could do so some people would have immediately said like no, you can't. Then when I gave the example of somebody, you know, dying of the, of an illness, they're like, okay, fine, I can see that. But yeah, I would yeah, even yeah. go one step further. I can see somebody getting to a point in their life. And although I would disagree with their decision, simply saying, I don't see any light at the end of this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I can see somebody, you don't have to be insane to get yeah. to that point. Again, I would advocate that you don't do it. I would advocate that sort of you look at it on a, on a broader scope because in my opinion, this is the only existence you have. Yeah. So yeah. whatever you're feeling, like you say you want to get to a happy state, you're not going to feel anything once it's done because you won't exist any longer. Yeah. That's, that's the way I say it. But I can see how a sane person can get to that point and not move from it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I don't, I don't but, I mean, immediately, yeah, I don't that's, immediately that's, just, I don't want to condescend to somebody who's necessary mind and simply say, there's something wrong with your brain. Right now, yeah. you're insane in some sense. I yeah. think that well, that's pay- that's that's the whole thing. That that's you know from from uh, just psychiatrists and junk I've seen. That's the point that they I've ever I've always seen from it. Is it's that's why it's oh here's some pills. These are going to help you. It's going to we need to take you me, It's going to make your it doesn't your, your, It's going to make your brain's you know chemicals get back to normal, so you're not going to feel you know that those side effects or whatever. And it's like no, that's why I said. Psychiatrists are pill pushers. They're drug dealers. That's all they do because they don't sit there and try to deal with the underlining, you know, problem of actually, you know, the cause of it. What's all the things? You know, what can we do to help? They'll tell you, oh, well, you need to be around family. You need to be people who love you. You know, this and that, blah blah blah. If you don't have that, you know, what the hell are you gonna do? Take pills? No. You know, oh, find friends. If you're already depressed, you don't want to find friends. And no one wants you to don't want to be. You, yeah, you don't want to find guy. people who are going to be fake with you. You don't want to find any of that. And there's very few people who will stick around. Someone who is, but that's super understand. depressed and get to that downer, thing. Yeah, they, no, but that's, I mean that's, down, that's the one thing. Bring yeah. people down with you. Yeah, and then you have the 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 opposite effect on that, to where people who who are considering suicide, you don't know. Because yeah. they're like, oh no, we're you know they're gonna be happy. They're gonna do stuff. Like I said, Robin Williams, happiest guy you ever know. You know, at least Out, it seemed outwardly. Yeah, but no one knew it was gonna happen. He did it, whatever. You know, so some of them, yeah, you can see people doing it. You know, you can see that it may be uh, something that they're thinking of. 
And, you know, you're going to try to help him out or you're just going to say, oh, screw him. That guy's, you know, he's, he's a downer. I don't want to deal with him. You know, and then some of them, you're like, he was so happy. I didn't know. I would have done something if I knew. It's like, no, you wouldn't have. I damn sure you would not have done anything well, other than like, oh, well, I think he may try to kill himself or she may try to kill herself. They may the well, small I mean, comment about what? Like, you're not going to sit there and talk to them well, to actually try to talk them down really? and stuff. Other than, other than just being there and actually yeah. showing general love and care for the person, there is not much you can do yeah, other than sit there. And if they do times. decide to you know take their life or whatever, all you can you'll do is mourn su- them. Sometimes you'll be on suicide watch for like, your your entire waking moment if, yeah. you, if you take on that responsibility. Yeah. And but I mean, what, that's the thing is you can, is it, I think one, in general, I think one uh, thing that will help, that does help people, some, not all, some, is the fact that if they have someone there that generally shows care for them and knows that no matter what, you're going to be there, you know, give them a call any time of the night, you know, whatever. It's like, hey, you know, I'm just, I, need someone around and it's not gonna be like oh well you're too depressing for me i don't want to be here they're gonna sit there and actually you know show love Mm -hmm. i think that in general helps people who who aren't as far gone enough to where they're saying you know i'm just gonna end it there's nothing else for me there's no like anything and that's the one thing like i don't know the story i don't like i didn't read the whole story of it and stuff for for uh, chester I know there was he he did it on the day of Chris Cornell's uh, birthday. Would have been would have been his fifty third birthday. Yeah, yeah, would have been his birthday, and, and it was, I, it was a hard day for him, I'm sure, because of the fact that he knew him very well. It would have reminded him. Yeah, totally and so it. you know, yeah. So, so that's it, it could have been there. could have been one of those things he didn't plan it. It was just it just happened. Yeah. Just that day, he's like, you know what, I'm overwhelmed with this grief, and he was saying like, you know, I just feel things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deeply. And so I, I think that's that's. You know, like I said, I don't know the whole story. I, you know, I don't Only know if anyone knows, ever. Really. I don't know if anyone ever wrote the whole thing of of the the, the day leading up to it or the days leading up well, to it. He and stuff. performed but, at his funeral, and uh, they said like he couldn't uh, in a memorial to Chris Cornell. He couldn't finish uh, some of the song the songs that were doing it. Like he, he had to stop because he was so overcome. With yeah, yeah, yeah. So obviously, it, it's been affecting him since yeah, the day. Since, since, yeah, since, since the day, Cornell yeah. suicide. Yeah, uh, but. Uh, it it also comes to and let's put it back to you know, like musicians and things like we were saying talking about how like in countries where you are and most people who are sort of used to the luxuries or the rest even yeah. if you're of a working class poor background yeah, yeah, yeah. what we have is still much more like people with it in a third world countries seem overall report more happiness and satisfaction with their lives yeah even though they know that we have more and they would probably look at us like we're crazy to complain yeah, about yeah, anything yeah. just like we look at celebrities like they're crazy to complain about anything yeah, shut yeah, your mouth yeah yeah, yeah. The thing is, though, they are more grounded just to everything in their day life, just because it's more of a tight knit community. The more you get to sort of metropolitan, modern, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. the less you feel connected to anybody. I'm not connected to <laughs> people else outside of people within my immediate circle. And now imagine you're a celebrity. You're so far not a crown, you're so far removed from like the average daily burdens. I mean, like uh, just daily nuances of life, like the things yeah, yeah, that yeah. just happen. Uh, like in daily, you're so far away from, and people are fake towards you because everybody either loves you or everybody either hates you. It, everyone wants something from you. Yeah, people that meet you, do they really like you? Do yeah, they not yeah. like you? What are they just trying to sort of get some of your fame? Yeah, yeah, yeah So yeah, yeah, they yeah. don't really have interactions the way we do. Yeah. They don't really have a perception the way that we do. Yeah, of things. So they they just I think that they it's depression is actually much much more likely to happen in an individual like that. Yeah, and of course I mean we see it more just because it's it's trying to be on the news. Another thing that just kind of popped in my head right now too. It's not just depression that causes suicide though. Mm -hmm. Stress can cause it as well. Because if you think about uh, Japan, there's the whole forest that they call the dead forest, where people or the suicide forest, where you know. Japanese men go and hang themselves and commit suicide because of the stress of work, the stress of everything, because, you know, Japan is a highly stressed, you know, business motivated place. And the stuff. expectations You're, are really high. Yeah, it's, it's they're very, very high there. So, I mean, stress though. will cause it as well. You know, not just like, are oh, you super stressed? Oh, you got to be on super, you know, you got to be on suicide watch. No. 
I mean, yes, it deals with some of the depression because you're depressed of, you know, you're not hitting your quotas or whatever it is, but you're also so stressed that it, it causes that, that uh, depression in a sense. Mm-hmm. You know, um, look at uh, child actors. A lot of them, when they get older, they don't have, you know, the fame. They don't have all of that. And they have the stress of, oh, well, you used to be so big. You know, Corey Hames or whatever the Hames, whichever Hames it was, <laughs> or whichever Corey it was, you know. Uh, you know, has all that stress and he spent his whole life trying to capture that, you know, childhood, you know, big starness thing, you know, and look at other people like uh, the guy who was in a sidekick. Uh, I don't know his name, unfortunately. He ended up hanging himself because of the stress of it. He didn't hit the fame that he had as a child actor, you know. Well, and so, there, I mean, it's stress and, and depression and stuff that causes it. But a lot the, of the time, not the, a lot of times, some of the times... It's the suicide and stuff is brought on by like stress as well, not just when, you know being, it, being sad. Here's the thing. Now, this isn't something that I, I know. This wasn't what would affect someone like Chester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of times you'll see like with people, with musicians, actors, celebrities, going into a state of irrelevance, so falling from where they were. Yeah. Down, uh, Chris, the guy from Criss Cross, the. Guy from Mini Vanilla, he was disgraced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, well, both of them were disgraced, but the one that actually went ahead and committed suicide. I mean, they were at a level that you was considering, like, this is fame. They crossed that, and then they plummeted to a point where they're never going to get back to. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, even though, like, we'll, we would say, like, oh, well, when you're so high up, you know, like, the air is thin, like, your, your perception is different, like, a, you know, falling to the sort of stress of performing, you've got to remain on that point yeah like the pressure is on like your life sure easy street because you've got money you've got the fame you've get you'll get the girls or the guys or whatever yeah. that you want but it's once but you if you don't irrelevant. what happens when you don't you can yeah. your star will shine only so long before you start sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. slipping down 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 because what you're doing will become old <laughs> what yeah. you're doing will it'll, someone will do it better than you do oh, yeah. <laughs> like or, or you'll just lose popularity because the next generation isn't going to be concerned with you yeah uh, I mean well. that's so that's, with musicians that's... you'll see that a lot especially like if you're part of a trend if you're part of I'm pretty sure there's a lot of glam musicians that commit oh, suicide yeah. if we go down the list just because what happens when your source of income becomes you know Persona non grata, like it becomes totally, totally useless when it comes to actually making money and getting fame, and that's all you've done for ten yeah. years. Like uh, you, you see the music, you see with actors what happens when you know whatever you had looks or anything like that starts to fade away, and nobody wants to hire you anymore. Yeah, it's yeah, you become a. I mean, when someone like Danny Bonaduce, he was the kid in the. Yeah, uh, but the child act, you know, yeah, child, child actor. Well, when whatever. who wants to see him as a grown up? Well, he can't play that. He's only going to be a kid for so long. Yeah. Eventually, he's too old. He's not that talented. He turned to drugs. He was suicidal. He he attempted suicide more than once. Yeah. Uh, he tried. He went down the real. God, I think once you go reality down the TV. reality TV path, that's a cry for help. <laughs> <laughs> like any, I don't name one celebrity that turned to reality TV. And it turned out to be a good thing. I don't say Trump. Because <laughs> he was kind of a... He was throwing his name long before yes. reality TV and the apprentice came along. Yes. So that's just a normal niche he already inhibited. Yeah. But uh, Trump. It, it, like Impeach. everybody else, it just... It One, always, year. One year mark impeachment. Well, we're going to hold you to that. Yeah, I know. We're going to hold you I'm to that. I'm standing by that. And if he doesn't get impeached, now, that here's bastard the, should be. <laughs> now, here's the other thing, though, when it comes to a celebrity suicide in particular. Someone like just to... Chester Bennington. Yeah. You, one thing, you're going to get reactions like the one that we just had, which is like very much, okay, this is something we should discuss, this is something we should talk about. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. But then you're also going to get the overplay of emotions. Some of you like, Linkin Park was the one thing that gave me meaning in my life. Good night, sweet prince, who has who is shined this light on humanity, devil, whose legacy will now go forth and bring joy to all the next generation. Okay. Please, please yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah. Like whoever it is, they are talented artists, all of them. You know, I'm putting with all of all of the ones that come to us. You know, even Kurt yeah. Cobain, even every single one of them. They are not, <laughs> by any means, the pillars that hold up life and society and civilization and anything else. It's the same thing I say when people always look for the celebrities to be like, what is your opinion on the foreign policy? Why are you asking them? 
Yeah. Why are you asking? Like, they're supposed to know some. These are people who have barely graduated high school for the most part. I know some yes. have gone much higher. For the most part, these are people who barely graduated high school, usually at a 2.0 GPA, if that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they, there wasn't their focus to the, be educated. Yeah, Other education like wasn't their focus. Even, even self-education, many, many of them have gone through so much substance abuse in their life, they can barely focus on anything outside of the one thing that they are talented at. Yeah. Don't, don't hold them up as these what you say that's not to say like you know like it's if you feel a certain level of grief that your favorite musician killed themselves that they died in, that they're dead in general of yeah, course yeah. feel it but don't now overplay it because I mean you might if you haven't listened to a single Linkin Park song in like a decade yeah. don't now pretend and when Michael Jackson died the same thing happened these people who he he was a punchline for the last 10 years of his life oh yeah he was a punchline People laughed at him. You laughed at him. I laughed at him. That's not, you know, I'm not putting uh, yeah, yeah, somebody yeah, else. Yeah. Like, I made jokes about Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Comedians made jokes on late night uh, come, uh, talk show hosts made yeah, fun yeah. of him. And then when he died, they, and then they were the, all, like, the a, second the news hit, he died, you know, he was loss. a great saint amongst us. Al Sharpton goes to his window. He's the reason Barack Obama was elected as well. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not going to take mean, anything away from all his family. His family should want him because they're close to him and they love him, safety yeah, with Chester yeah, yeah. and everybody else. But is my life really affected because either Michael Jackson or Chester yeah. or that? No, or but, they, yeah, but that's, really. that's the thing is, I mean, in general, just someone, not someone, but people want to be heard when something like that happens, you mm-hmm. know. It's, it's, they want it, be, it gets down as like, oh, well, listen to me, listen to me. Get my 15 minutes of fame. You know, from someone else's tragedy, you know, stuff like that. I think personally, any of that stuff, any deaths, celebrity deaths, any of that stuff should be handled privately. You should just be right. like, don't make it expensive. You, know, you should be like, oh, this person died. And, you know, you know, you know, sadly we lost, you know, Prince. Mm-hmm. Not okay. Now we're going to hold a, a four month festival in his name and we're going to do tours and we're going to do this like Michael Jackson, you know, the, you know, his death and it was freaking rented out the Staples Center and, you know, people left and right and it was all on TV and then they put the movie out, you know, all this stuff. I'm like, this should be handled in private. All you have to say is, you know, it's a great loss. Done. No more. Yeah. Oh, we're going to put on a big show. We're going to do this and benefit concert. You don't need a benefit concert. That dude was rich. All celebrities who are still in the, you know, name spotlight. Have the money to be taken care of for their funerals. You don't need no benefit of any sort of whatever. You know, it's like, oh, well, you know, you got to raise money for the children. They're taken care of. I'm sure they had money set aside. I'm sure everything's fine. All they need to do is be in private and take care of their own, you know, problems in that sense. Let them mourn privately, not publicly. And be like, oh, well, listen to this and that, blah, blah, blah. It's sad that these people died either naturally or by their own hand. But it shouldn't be dealt with in the public. Other than, you know, quick conversations, things mm-hmm. like what we're doing, you know, we're not sitting there and holding a big old, you know, photo of Chester Bennington or Chris Cornell or any of that stuff. It's just we're talking about them, but we're also talking about the issues of the fact mm-hmm. that... Well, these are the sort of things one people of things would... Cause it. These are topics that would come up naturally when this conversation yeah. would come. That's why I wanted to cover it. Uh, right now, while it's still sort of in people's consciousness, yeah, yeah, yeah. in a month's time, all the people who are deeply mourning now will have moved on. Oh, yeah. Something I mean, else it's can not, happen. And again, I'm not saying it to insult you. It's just you, can, like, you don't know these people. Yeah. You don't know these people. Like, yeah. the, the people who are closest to them, when they kill themselves, they will be affected for times to come. Yeah, they, yeah, will, yeah. they will always be traced someone that's going to mourn. I don't know these people. You don't know these people. You listening randomly <laughs> on uh, SoundCloud or iTunes or YouTube. <laughs> or whichever. Whichever whichever platform you're on right now. You sitting by your computer or listening to us on your smartphone. You don't know these people. Like you're not part of their lives and they're not part of your life. Like that's a, that's a thing that I don't understand. And it goes back to like the whole hero worship that I talk about. So that's, well, I mean, I mentioned last time, you know, we like brought up, you know, John Lennon. As a person, I mean, he wasn't he wasn't the greatest guy, and like we can go down his whole list of crappy things, you know, wife beater, what him and Paul getting rid of Michael Best because they were jealous that he was better looking than them, and replaced them with a drummer that nobody would be jealous of looks wise. Ringo Starr, 
Yeah. Uh, but I mean, like, so he clearly wasn't somebody to idolize as an individual. Now, you know, yeah, his songs talk about peace and all that other, other stuff. The image of him. Yeah. Sure. The person. No, I'm not so deluded by the grandeur of his songs. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. Not, where I can't recognize that. And I won't let anybody criticize him. And that's what happens. So when you get to the point where you idolize something, so but, but even it's worse when you start idolizing them only after they're dead. Yeah. When, when you make a big deal out of it, only after that, like you're talking about how they parade, they will sort of parade them around when they, once they die, when uh, uh, Michael Jackson died, they're like, that was a big spectacle. Oh, yeah. When Prince died. Uh, in some sense, also, like, I guess uh, amongst the male heads when Lemmy died, things that, although I feel like when they're older, people are sort of like, oh, well, it's just the natural part of things. You get yeah, like, yeah, you yeah, die. Yeah, yeah. When it's like a suicide or a drug overdose, yeah. people are more like, it's a shame this didn't need to happen. Now, you know, like we'll pour our hearts out. Yeah. But I sort of, I feel like I'm committing an act of vandalism when I'm looking at that. Like it's yeah. not for me. Oh, yeah. Like it's, just, it's not for me to be a part of this deeply emotional event for the people who know them. I am not like as an observer I shouldn't be an observer same way if somebody close to me dies like if some random group of people just walked in in a funeral just started watching and all yeah. crying their eyes out I'd yeah, be like yeah, yeah, yeah. who the hell are you people <laughs> yeah well it, it, here's a, a, a funny thing I guess it's dealing with a personal issue on it um, like when my mother died you know years ago or whatever mm -hmm. I didn't really show much emotion towards it because I didn't really know my mother and I go to the funeral and I see people there that I really don't know who the hell they are. And they're all crying and, you know, saying, oh, I'm sorry for your loss, blah, blah, blah. And I'm sitting there like, who the hell are you? It's like, I don't know who you are. You're part of my family. You weren't around when I was, uh, you know, uh, you know, younger. I didn't see you. I saw you maybe some familiar faces who were around every once in a while when we had a party or something, but that was it. So, you know, as a personal thing, I was sitting there like, well, all of you should just go away. It's just the immediate family. Me, my brothers, my dad, you know, my sisters, whatever. Immediate family. Everyone else, they may have been your, you know, yeah, she may have been your sister or whatever, aunt. But spend your own time. Come back later. It's private. Go away. You know? And that's just me, my, my personal thought, which I guess is kind of messed up, you know, in that sense. But the fact is, like I said... I didn't really know my mother, but I still felt the fact that I should have had more of a private time you know, with the family. To say goodbye. You know, to say goodbye, stuff like that. And I mean, you know, they do have that. Get some level of closure. Yeah, but they do have that at the end. We need all, fa you know, all but the immediate family to stay behind. You know, all the, but the immediate family needs to leave, blah, blah, blah. And it's funny because they tried to kick me out. <laughs> and I was like, that's my mother. Get your hands off of me and get the hell out the building. You know, again, no emotion. I wasn't like all crying and sobbing and stuff, but that's because I had a disconnect mm -hmm. of the fact that I didn't really know my mother. Right. And you know, and so, I mean, yeah, you can, people who are, you know, hearing this, whatever, like, yeah, that guy's a psychopath. No, no, no. Not it really. Is. It's just when you have a really close connection to someone, like, you know, you're supposed to have your, with your family, your mother, your father, you see them every day, you get that connect. I didn't see, you know, again, right. didn't see her very often. I did went as an adult, but. I always had a felt a slight disconnect. So that's the thing is I think going into the disconnect of like fans and the immediate family of people like, you know, having to deal with the, you know, Chester's funeral or Chris Cornell's or all the death and stuff. I think all that should have been completely private and just dealt with them other than the news or whatever getting out saying, you know, this person died today or, you know, killed themselves or whatever it is. That's all it should be. Not, okay, well, now we're going to have a memorial and every new station is going to do, you know, an hour long, whatever on it, and blah, blah, blah. It's like, no. This happened. Privacy for the family. Send your condolences by word. Don't send messages and tweets and, you know, Facebook and calling and all this stuff. Like, oh, we're so sorry. Oh, we loved him so much. Oh, yes, I listen to him every day. They changed my life. I'm like, who the hell are you? <laughs> you know? I was like, <laughs> if somebody, and here's the thing, if somebody genuinely feels a certain way and they want to express it, like you say, like, would you mind? You didn't fake it much. Like, you didn't 
it's your mother and you wanted to have that closure. Yeah. You didn't, but you weren't about to fake uh, yeah. a connection that wasn't there just because you didn't know her. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah. feel like, look, if somebody uh, feels a certain connection to us and say, you know, like their art, their music, yeah, help me get through rough times. And I feel that by all means, pull your heart out on that. But a lot of times it just, it seems like you're forcing emotions, yeah, yeah, whether yeah. you notice it or not, you're forcing a reaction that doesn't, no one, it doesn't seem genuine to me. Yeah. Like, and you might not be doing it intentionally. You might just be the kind of person you see something sad, you get emotional. Yeah. yeah you yeah. heard that some, you know, some kitten on the other side of the planet you five years it, ago, five years ago, got run over by a car. I mean, and you're like, you, you're immediately like, I feel a deep connection to it. There are people like that. Yeah. But they are fine <laughs> in between. The majority yeah, yeah, yeah. of the art point, I feel like it's not so much about you trying to, you know, like a fee, uh, you trying to like a mourn for the person as much as you kind of, this is, you're trying to cope with your own mortality. Yeah, yeah, you're trying, yeah, yeah. You're trying to, it's sort of like a, it's more closure for yourself yeah. than it is for anything that has to do with the person. Like it could have been anybody else that you know about. Yeah. Who's, the, who's a household name to you and you would have had the same reaction. And if it's, and if you have that reaction for just about every famous person or every musician that you like, yeah. it cheapens the whole thing yeah. for me. That's why and I said like, you don't know these people, you're kind of just a stalker on the sidelines, and I don't mean that in a derogative yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Musicians, we like we're stalkers that follow them yeah, in some yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. But we, I, I just I I know I'm not part of their life, and nor should I be, and nor yeah. should, will I pretend to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just, and, I mean, that's the one thing. Just like uh, in in general, just quick uh, comment on it. There have been some things I've seen, like comments of you know people deaths and stuff, and it's like a quick thing saying you know we're sorry for your loss. Uh, condolences to your family, and that's it. And it's like we hope you, you know, well, leave you in your and privacy. Nothing wrong with that. And it's it's like I think those people are the ones who generally, you know, care in a sense. And to me, and they're not putting out videos and crying and fakeness and stuff as we stated a couple of times. They're just pretty much, you know, we know it's a private time for you. We just want to send our condolences. Done. A sentence, and that's it. You know, it's not like oh well, you know, ten minute long crying and putting on the music or doing whatever it's like yeah it'd be funny you're putting on this music of, of like you know lincoln park and then they sue your ass for <laughs> copyright infringement <laughs> I, I would personally i'd be like yeah let's sue your ass see how much you're gonna feel about that now you know you're yeah. putting on music that's copyrighted and stuff like that which goes on a whole different <laughs> you know thing there because you know they shouldn't have to deal with that in the first place it's i don't know it's sort of going on a less I guess I want to draw a parallel with a less serious topic than suicide and yeah, death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, it's just the way people sort of feel this instant connection whenever something becomes newsworthy or it starts to, as I call it, it's trending. Yeah. yeah. And like uh, in the media or anywhere else, uh, there is something happens to somebody that has, uh, vaguely has a newsworthy platform. So yeah. some... A uh, commentator somewhere was marginalized by somebody else. All of a sudden, everybody, and let's say they had an audience of about a hundred people. Yeah. On average, throughout the whole career. Yeah. Suddenly, thousands of people pouring in saying, this person, we need to stand by them because they're an example of what, you know, like whatever X, whatever field they're in, you know, like it's all about, okay, where the hell were you? Yeah. <laughs> Before this event, whatever great yeah, yeah, <laughs> tragedy yeah, yeah, yeah. you're talking about, whatever great in injustice you're talking about, where the hell were you? You won't listen to this guy. Yeah. He had like a hundred people listening to him, if not less. Yeah. It's like it follows, it's like if we got shut down suddenly by any platform they were on and suddenly a lot of people took up our cause. Like, yeah. no, say it's a blasphemy is a great example of what music discussion about. I'm sorry. It's like, who, who the hell are like, you? I, I know what our view account is. Yeah. Like, I know, I know you don't give a damn us. You're more concerned. You're more concerned about the idea of what this cement represents. Yeah, so the yeah, same yeah. thing like with, uh, we talk about like the greater, you know, like we went, I mean, the first half hour of this whole episode was about like, we talk about the underlying factors of depression, of disillusionment, of feeling like you're not connected to anybody. And somebody might like to take up the cause yeah, yeah, of those yeah. things and then they cling on to something that's a physical representation that like 
a celebrity suicide, like a musician is struggling with yeah, depression yeah, yeah. and yeah. substance abuse, and then they kill themselves. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, they, they use that as sort of the calling card to address these other issues. But I feel like that is a very disingenuous way to talk about it. If you want to talk about the issue, so knows like I used Chester as a way to launch yeah, yeah, yeah. into the other things, but I'm not depending on him yeah. in any way. I made, I made it very clear, like anytime, you know, like just from a humanist standpoint, yeah, anytime yeah, yeah. somebody dies, you know, just without, without the need there to be like, if it's a tragic accident, natural disaster, suicide, yeah, yeah, a, yeah. Death, a killing, a murder, you, you feel a certain reaction to it. You're like, oh man, that's unfortunate. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like my condolences goes out to their families and all that. But I don't pretend it goes beyond that. <laughs> like my life is unaffected. Yeah. If it hadn't happened, my life would be the same. Now that it has happened, my life is pretty much the same. Yeah. And yeah. Like, and, not, you know, and I can't, I'm not going to fake emotion. Like if I want to talk about depression, I'm going to talk about depression. I'm not going to use somebody else's tragedy and somebody else's yeah, yeah, grief yeah, yeah. as a step to get to that. Yeah. And it's, uh, you're, you're talking about, you know, you know, tragedies and depression and stuff like that. Um, there's another thing that just came to my mind. It's, uh, I'm not, you know, if, if no one really, you know, picked it up <laughs> by just the way we're talking about it, but I'm not a biggest fan of Lincoln Park, you know, whatever. Yeah, so, 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 yeah. So, you know, people who listen to this may be like, oh, well, you're talking like this about them because you don't really care. I was a big fan, or and still am a big fan, of Slipknot. When uh, their bassist died, you know, killed himself, I wasn't all like, oh, my condolences, I feel so bad for you. I was like, whoa, that sucks. He was a great bassist. He made a, mm-hmm. you know, he rounded out a great band. You know, it's, it's a sad time for the fact that he did, you know, end up t- taking his life because of, you know, the way it ever happened. And, you know... I, you know, sorry, sorry for that, for your loss as a band. You know, I wasn't like super emotional, like, oh my God, no, no. I was like, you know, there's nothing I can do about it. You don't know me. I've seen your show once, but you guys weren't like, hey, Brian, my friend. And even if they were, I mean, it's still, you know, it's like I may have met him, you know, if I met him on the thing, they may, hey, how's it going? Yeah, yeah, dude, whatever. How many people do you freaking meet? They're not going to remember gonna, everybody. They're not gonna they don't really them. care. It's like, oh, hey, uh, fan. All right, Gary. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, buddy. Woo-hoo. Take your yeah. Okay, bye. Next. You know? So that's the whole thing. I was like, oh, you know, I feel bad. And the, you know, the best thing I saw as someone dealing with it was uh, Corey, you know, the singer. He actually went on a, a tattoo show. I forgot what it was. And he actually got the, his picture tattooed on him. And he's saying it's, it's you know, as he was talking about it, and you actually felt, you know, the emotion as he was talking about it. It was a private moment and stuff, but he did the whole thing, and you can feel from the standpoint of someone who actually cared and was there, knew him, you know, what what he went through and why he did it and stuff. And he was like, you know, it was, you know, it actually got me. It was like, oh wow, that's you know, I see that emotion, I feel it. And, you know, I was like, that's that's how it should be. It kind of dealt privately, but it wasn't dealt privately because it was on TV. <laughs> But I mean, they dealt the thing, and then still to this day, actually, I don't know about recently because I haven't seen it in a while. But the last time I knew, when they started doing another album, they didn't replace him. You know, they didn't put a new guy in the suit and was like, "Yeah, he's our new bassist." They had his whole suit, his mask, and everything up front as they performed. And at the end of the concert, they go and they're like, "We love you. You know, thank you for all the times that you gave us and stuff. And you know, we just wanted to show you appreciation for that." And that's all they did. You know, they're like, okay, cool. Sorry, we felt so bad. Okay, get rid of them. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Like, the two, they still show respect to her in that sense. And so, you know, just stating that fact that there's a band I actually love, and I still don't show the, the whole, like, oh, my God. Oh, I feel so sad for them. Maybe, let me put a 20-minute video on it and cry. And I was like, no. Just condolences. That's all I, <laughs> that's all I can do. You don't know me. I don't know you. You know, right. so I think that should be done that way for all people and for all famous people in a sense, mm-hmm. because that's just me, I guess. Right. But that's well, just because I way, think they should deal with it privately, not publicly. Yeah, it's because I mean, like I said, like we keep saying, like these people, and like 
we don't know each other. There's a listen, people listening to us. You, know, yeah. you can listen to every episode that we have. You don't really know us. You know a one hour period of what we present to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. You, you, like you and I know each other. We've been friends for many years. Yeah. Like, so if something happens, you know, impactful in other of our lives, it's more of an immediate thing. If yeah. something happens to an acquaintance of a coworker of mine, well, I mean, again, I will empathize as a human being to another human yeah, being, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it doesn't change anything in my life now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. it doesn't change. Like we, we've all had like tragic events in our lives that yeah. affect us deeply. But you know, if you just meet someone and they tell you about their past history, you went just fine for all those years that these tragic things were happening to you. Yeah, like you didn't, it, it didn't affect you. But let's close off on a, on a topic like sticking with the same thing, but on the music quest. Do you think there's a correlation with these sort of things happening, like where suicide, depression fall into, and sort of the genre of the musicians that it affects. Like if, a, let me clarify on that. Yeah, yeah, if, okay. if a heavy rocker, alternative rocker, uh, maybe even somebody who te- whose lyrics and music tends to go more towards the angrier, sadder rock, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, commits suicide, or you know falls down a path that leads to yeah, a yeah, tragedy. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to somebody who does, you know, happy go lucky bubblegum party songs or something like that. Do you think there's a correlation between that? It's just like, because that was sort of a reflection of who they were. It's even that the one who does so, like the happy songs, See, it's, a, it's not like a, oh, the, this is a label telling you you have to sing the song. It's that, that's actually their yeah, own yeah, yeah. content that they so, put out no, there. That's, that's do, actually, do you think there is a that's correlation? That's actually something that I, you know, haven't really thought too much on it, but I did in a sense that. You you hear more about you know suicides from people who have had you know darker songs, sadder songs, yeah. things like that. You don't really hear like I can't off the top of my head can't think of any pop artist or anyone who's very you know happy go lucky songs you're killing themselves. I can't you know no one's popping my head and maybe I will you know eventually you know the comment section after will a while or comments or whatever. But I mean I'm sure there are people out there who you know who really you know they had really happy and poppy songs and stuff like that and they you know took their own life because they were depressed but that's the thing is like i stated robin williams he may not be a musician but in public Mm -hmm. hyper as hell happy always making people feel good things like that and he killed himself because he himself wasn't you know the happiest guy he wasn't in the right state of mind in a sense and you know, he knew things were happening and he was getting disease that eventually was going to cause a lot more trouble for his family. And so he, you know, not said, you know, not in the sense that, oh, he's just how he thought it, but he took the path that would end it faster in a sense, you know, because if you wanted to go back, it's like, well, if Robin Williams was getting Parkinson's, why doesn't Michael J. Fox ever kill himself? He has Parkinson's. Two different mindsets. You're right. He and himself two different got support it. structures he, yeah. too. One also his thing. We don't know. You know, Michael J. Fox when he was first diagnosed, he did self medicate with alcohol. Yeah, and yeah, he, yeah. Admittedly, until he got around to it, and the way he got around it was his family support structure yeah. really kicked in and really sort of gave him some sense of hope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With Ron Williams, he was going through a painful divorce. Years of depre- you know, decades of depression, lump on top of that diagnosis of an illness that will painfully cause you to suffer for years to come. Yeah, that will kill you in an ag- agonizing way. Yeah, you know, lump all that together, and he was already an unhappy guy. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a recipe for disaster. Yeah, so yeah, everybody yeah. will go a different way. I mean, you can't say, oh, well, what about Christopher Reeves and kill himself after he was. You know, he was Superman and then he was confined to a wheelchair, unable to, you know, him being able to move his finger was a great accomplishment. Yeah. You know, like at one point. But he had a hell of a support structure well, around that. Actually, one. he also contemplated suicide when it first happened. But again, yeah. his fa- his wife and his family came in, sort of rallied around it. Yeah. And that, again, gave him a reason to go on. The more you feel isolated, though, but whether there are people around you or not, you just, you feel isolated. Yeah, you feel like, yeah, that's the thing. As you feel like there are no genuine people yeah. who have my interest in mind, who care that whether I'm here or not. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. less, the more likely you are to fall into this sort of yeah, yeah. level of thinking. And that happens for everybody, celebrity, musician, average, Josh, yeah, anybody. And so, yeah, like you're saying, we're trying to end it with the thing. 
uh, just my last comment in a sense is the fact that I don't, like I said, I didn't read too much into, you know, the story of why he, you know, Chester killed himself. I don't really even know why Chris, you know, Cornell killed himself or any of that. But like I said, my whole stance is it's private. I don't want to really get delve into the, the mindset of what people are thinking in last stories. You know, I did read a, a, a couple of comments uh, of an article that was uh, someone did talking to Matt Penfield, who was a big fr- who was a friend of Chester, you know, and Chris. And he's talking about, you know, how how he noticed that Chester was feeling down. And he, he, you know, he knew something was up or whatever, but he had conversations and everything seemed fine. There's not really much you can do about it, you know. And so that's the thing is it's t- from someone who is actually a friend talking about it and he's not like bringing up this whole thing. It was like, Oh, well, you know, so sad and blah, blah, blah. It was like, this is what I know. That was it. You know, I didn't really read the whole article and really get in depth with it, but at least it was something. So, I mean, it's, I don't know the, the support structure Chris Cornell had or Chester Pennington. I really don't know. I'm sure they had support. I mean, they had families, they had children and children are probably the only people that are going to love you. <laughs> no yeah. matter what well sometimes for a lot of people like, like that's so like when you have kids neither one of us does <laughs> if, yeah. if, you, if you have kids the way the people who do have kids the way they describe it so like it give, it's not about you it's about the kids so yeah. why do you hold out and go to a shitty job and make money yeah. it's because yeah. you, you've got to support this other yeah. human being and it, it stops being so much about you, your needs as their needs so do yeah. they still need me around to yeah, take yeah, care yeah. of them offer advice even in old age I'm going to hold out. <laughs> yeah. to, to but I mean, so, but, that's that's, the, but that people. is the one thing is like, well, he did, you know, end up taking his own life and he does have children. He had, you mm-hmm. know, he had family, things like that. So there are other things. Yeah, there are always exceptions. You know, other underlining problems and stuff that did that. But I mean, it was stated that you knew he was really depressed about it, really shooken up about the, the you know, the death of his friend that he's had for years, you know. Things like that. So, there, was there anything that could really be done? Not really, I guess. Because I, I mean, mean, other than for, watching them twenty four hours a day and sitting there like, "Hey, you okay? You okay?" That alone will drive someone to freaking insane. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it would me. I think it comes down to the reason why we cling on to these sort of events when it happens because now you have a face to an abstract concept. Yeah. So you could talk about the hypothetically about depression, and you can talk about you know anecdotal evidence of people that you've seen or yourself but when you have a person you can sort of use as a as a hallmark of it of sort of like just a, as a banner yeah. like this happened to this person if you are feeling like this person you're like let's suggest the way we do and let's all sort of like pour our hearts out at it that makes it a lot easier for people to address it so yeah. that's sort of uh, the last thing but we maybe it would be healthier for us as a society sort of to move past depending on people for that and just sort of talk about the issues if you need to talk about them and address them without having to sort of make a spectacle yeah. of the people who are you know who are victims of it ultimately yeah yeah, yeah. so I you know, like i guess that's a good point yeah <laughs> i think that's a great ending point right there so all right so we'll get you catch you guys next time probably on a more optimistic note we'll get to those uh Rock documentaries, rock documentaries, music documentaries. At some point, we just felt like uh, maybe we just need to be addressed first. Yeah, we'll, we we'll, we'll make sure we turn it to 11. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. We're just going to sit, uh, sit down and just use Final Tap for an hour and a half. <laughs> All right, catch you guys next time. All right, guys. See you.